Yep. So I'm here with Rick Asabin, uh, Super Giant Games. Hey. And uh, you all recently announced that you're putting Bastion out on the PS4. So tell me about um, yeah. how that came about and any changes or anything like that in store for Bastion? Yeah, indeed. Uh, yeah, Bastion is coming to PS4 uh, very soon now on April 7th. Uh, oh, wow. in, in, uh almost a month, uh, basically exactly. Um, and it, it was one of those things where, you know, Bastion originally came out in back in 2011. I don't think we could have possibly imagined that people would still be interested in that game now, you know, back then, uh, which is really, really cool. It's Why Bastion not? has been, <laughs> it was our first game and um, it was, it, it did really well for us, thankfully. And, and yeah, people, uh, are still interested in it and you know last year we released our second game transistor on the ps4 yes. uh, and uh thankfully uh that game was well received um and uh a lot of those folks you know on bastion has never been on a playstation console before that is true so there was um yeah the interest was there and we said uh, why not decided to put it out there so it's it's meant to be an exacting translation so folks um who played it before on xbox 360 or pc or something like that it's it's essentially the same game. Um, the kind of the biggest uh, difference on console is that it's it's full HD, whereas on uh, the Xbox 360 version was 720p. But that's a relatively takes a discerning eye for some players to. I didn't know that see the difference, it but because it didn't yeah. make any difference. <laughs> yeah, it looks. But but I think you know we think visually it still holds up uh, well. Other people can uh, judge for themselves, of course, but. Uh, we still think, uh, you know, the presentation of the game is one of its strong suits, and it's got a, uh, it's got its own distinct flavor. So it's it's really cool to see a lot of folks here at PAX, whose uh, familiarity with our studio comes uh, comes from our second game, so okay. playing you, you know playing Bastion second rather than playing Transistor second. So it's cool to see people come at it that way. That's interesting because people who play Bastion saw it like myself who might have seen Transistor and went, okay, I, I, I get it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean we don't, you don't get it. See, they're very different games, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there but, are certain, right. Yeah, but there's certain similarities between the two. So I wonder how people will process it coming the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wonder the same thing, and I, I, I don't know exactly. Like, um, And it's cool, to, it's cool to find out. And Now in the aftermath, you know, Transistor came out back in May of last year. So it's it's been a good... It's been a good while. Feels like only yesterday to me, but uh, um, yeah, at this point, it's had time to sink in, and it's always interesting to see uh, folks who played both our games kind of compare and contrast them. Because from our from our perspective, we we made Transistor. You know, our go our primary goal with that game was just to like make a new game with its own distinct identity. We're still the same small team, so I think our our heads go to some of the same places on certain things, but uh, just we wanted to make a its own science fiction thing with its own kind of weird rules and so on and so forth as as kind of a counterpart to our first game um and i think uh i think a lot of players do see that in it and yeah they kind of it's fun to see the debates i guess have you gone back and re-recorded any audio or anything for bastion no or it's is yeah it, it, the the con it's all it's all essentially the same content okay. you know we 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 considered, uh, I would say, briefly, the idea of, you know, of, of doing things like that. And uh, the reason we decided not to was because if we if we like added another level or something like that, then then I think it creates kind of a negative pressure on fans of that game to then go to to feel pressured or somehow obligated to like get this new version because this is the more complete version than the one they played. So that, that subtitle I saw over there that, that says the definitive edition, you can yeah. put that on there? I, I wasn't too. Okay. I'm just joking. Yeah, okay. You <laughs> freaked okay. me out. No, exactly. No, that, that's exactly right. It's like, I, I don't I don't like that kind of stuff as a game player because it like, it retroactively like cheapens the version of the game that I played. That already um, out. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not, that's not thrilled by it, but from a marketing standpoint. No, I, I get it, but it's not always not necessary. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I get it too, and it didn't it didn't feel right. It it would have it didn't feel right for Bastion, at least in this case, because it's like we always said you could go back and 
fact check whatever other interviews I did at the time about Bastion, but our goal with that game was to make like a complete feeling game. So for us to say, oh, it's the lost levels or something is just be totally phony. So Kratos is not in this version. Kratos is not, alas. No Kratos. Um, we did do, you know, we've done some, so, like the Steam version of the game has a little a bonus piece of content. It's not like we've never done that kind of stuff. It's just it didn't feel right in this But the case. release wasn't revolving around saying, hey, this is different than what you already no, bought. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, no. I think if anyone is interested in the game at this point, it's probably because they've heard it's a cool game and they wouldn't know the difference anyway if we added something. And That's like true. I said, and we don't want to lure, we, we don't want to pressure anybody into into like getting the game that they've already got, you know, so in some cases on more than one platform. No uh, we hear that from multiplayer nudity code. <laughs> <laughs> nudity code. We had to heavily consider that, but then we remembered our E10 plus ESRB rating and yeah. had to put the Ixnay on the nude code. Yes, but yes. but yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, you know, thankfully since it is like a 2D, I think 2D games. Uh, tend to hold up better over time in many cases. They, like, they don't feel as dated sometimes. They don't. After, they really don't. And, and so I, I think it's got some of that where it doesn't look like a game that came out three years ago necessarily. Again, other people can be the, judge, the judges of that. But, um, yeah, it seemed it seemed like a cool opportunity to re-release it and uh, put you know make it available to PlayStation fans for yeah, the first time. I'm sure they want to play it as well. It's a great cool. game. Was there anything that you learned from Transistor that you were doing differently for Bastion, despite it being previously released? Oh, if we would, like, go back and redo Bastion sort of in the... You know, um, I I thought very naively um, at the beginning of Transistor and kind of all throughout that uh, many aspects of that game's development would go more smoothly in light of our experience having made Bastion, because it's like, oh, man... We made this game, a bunch of people liked it, thankfully, and um, and now everything's going to be easier because we have all this experience working together. But Transistor was very challenging in its own right to make, um, in part because we did just go back and reevaluate every, you know, every decision that we made on Transistor was for Transistor's sake, and nothing was held over for that game just because it worked uh, on yeah, Bastion. That makes sense. So um, it was... It was its own animal, and, um, and I wish, I wish I could say that. I th this is like, this is something I I even have to like, kind of battle with or something. I I don't know that I'm like wiser for having made either of these games. I don't know that I feel like well, way I more mean, experienced or whatever. So yeah. Made, well, because you had to make games in a studio that was like that you helped create. Before, yeah, I mean, it's that in and of itself is an experience. There, there's that, but I think I think more than that for for me personally, it's that both of these games, it was such. We just went, we just tried to understand these particular games as we were working on them. So, a lot of the knowledge isn't doesn't really feel transferable. I we feel kind of now once again kind of back to square one of like now what are we going to do. Um, this sounds like humility, which is a good thing. Uh, I think I, I think that that's important personally. But if the uh, Ultima games taught me anything when I was a kid, uh, but yeah, the yeah. So ba Bastion, I I, I felt uh, it was a really great experience making that game in the first place. Where like at the end of it, I don't know that everyone on the team felt this way, but I personally was like, I don't know that everyone's gonna like this game, but. To me, this game is complete, and I wouldn't change anything about it. Um, so that, that was a very long answer. I, I don't know that I'll ever get to feel that way about anything else I work on. I think I think usually that kind of response comes off as BS because, yeah, I'm sure there's little things if I had to stop and think about it. But, but nothing on, a, on a high level, it's, you know, and, and, and the fact that people still, you know, again, it's succeeded beyond our our expectations really so who are we to say anything about it should be different because we we kind of uh, we seriously lucked out with how well received it was and it was kind of the, hit people just the right way when it came out and uh, we're still here for it thankfully able to keep coming to PAX and showing off new stuff or in some cases new versions of old stuff um, and yeah hopefully we get to 
keep going and making uh, interesting stuff for a long time to come. So you can tell me if I'm crying and you know you can't get into this, no, but yeah. I had read some months ago that there was uh, I, um, I think the, I'm trying to blank on the word. But there, there was there, I don't want to say turnover, but there there was some some staff changes. Oh, uh, we had uh, so so one uh, uh, Chris Journey who was our um, who was a programmer on we hired him while Transistor was in development, and he uh, he left at the end of the project. Uh, to go over to Oculus, uh, he loves VR. He's like, if he were here, he would tell you that if he could like sign up to turn himself into a cyborg, he would do so immediately. So it was a really awesome change for him. But Chris is the only he's the only person who's left. Our uh, we're a small team, so it was, uh, and he he he, uh, he he got this awesome opportunity after Transistor was done. So he he moved on. Uh, but other than that, we're we're the same team. Well, you know, when you're reading yeah. a blog, you don't, you know, I don't know the context, I yeah. don't know what the relate. But it, it's from what you just said, it sounds like it was opportunity, and you all wish him the best, and oh know, yeah, and things happen. You know, no, it, he's it, it, uh, yeah. Chris is like, change is Chris the only is our pa- uh, he's our like, Chris is a great dude. Yeah, yeah. We we love we love Chris, and it's like that's the thing. It's like we're we're in this stuff for the long haul, and that means people's lives will experience change yeah. over the course of it and and stuff and stuff like that it, it just it, it, like it's really important to us to keep uh to keep the team together as much as we can but life happens also you know uh, so, uh, and that that's just uh but also recognizing someone's qualities and what they're good at also means that they might be they might be a great fit elsewhere and sure yeah or they may want to no exactly, yeah, it's, and, it's and, exactly. and in the case of something like uh in the case of something like Oculus, and like you know, we we make these two D games. It's, it's something like Oculus is pretty fundamentally different it is. from the kind of stuff that we're doing. So, um, like I guess it's not even left and was working on it. He left and kickstarted a new version of Solstice or Equinox. You are right. You all kind of felt a little slighted. Like, wait a minute. Well, that, <laughs> that's one of those things. It's like we want as much as possible to be the sort of place where people can like, expl- you know, pursue, you know, push themselves in the in the directions that they. That they want to go in. And I was not implying that yeah. Equinox or Solstice. No, no, no. Were, I get exactly were, what yeah, you mean. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, yeah. I wasn't saying that you all just copied it. But hey, yeah. I just, Maybe I, Solstice a little bit. But <laughs> I meant more like, of a land stalker. Club. I meant from like the yeah. three quarter. That, that's yeah, all. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. No, I was not <laughs> I, that you all. <laughs> I took. Uh, I took no. No, I. I, I love. After what, I said it, I thought maybe that. I, I actually. Right. I. I love when. Um, like we owe a lot and to briefly sidetrack to that point. Like we. We owe so much to classic games. Like, I love when people, like, with Transistor, people are like, oh, I get, like, a Parasite Eve vibe from it. I'm like, that's that's awesome, dude. I That game was rad. Or Vagrant Story or something. Or Landstalker, Solstice, Equinox, and all that. Like, we, for, for us, I think all that stuff is sw- swirling around in our subconscious. Like, for sure, that stuff is influential to what we do, you know? Um, I thought of Sword in the Stone, but that's just me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I just made that so, up. I, I didn't think that at all. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't be making games if not for We're the games that influence us. Yeah, but yeah, as far as as far as our team is concerned, you know, it's like, like it's always been our goal to stay small and stick together for as long as possible and keep doing keep doing what we're doing, basically. But you all, well, you all work, you all live in the area. Remember before you were traveling. Uh, yeah, uh, it's sort of. Yeah, we um, we're in San Francisco now, and everyone is like, just about everyone besides Logan now, or uh, who's our uh, who does the voice. In he's in New York. Right? Yeah, he's in New York. But Darren, uh, our audio director, who is also in New York, he moved recently to the Bay Area also. So we're all pretty much under the same roof, with oh. the exception of Logan. But not um, literally under the same roof. <laughs> uh, we are when we work, but we no. we're we're very. Since we started as like semi-distributed with people traveling, and we still like work from home um, a lot of the time, and try to be very flexible um, about people's hours and stuff. And that, that's part of the nice thing about being small is people can just sort of define uh, their own work context as much as possible instead of it having to be like strict office hours or any of that stuff. Because well, like that was my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People, you know, people push themselves very hard with this stuff anyway so it, it's important to us to let people kind of uh, have have their leeway with it as much as they can so that they can work and you know create the most optimal conditions for them to do their best work 
agree. Yeah. yeah. So, but part of that is uh, being able to like convene in the same place is really valuable to it us. Is. Uh, that's actually part of why we love PAX. Uh, so up until very recently, PAX was one of the only times of the year when we could all be physically in the same place. And it's like, oh man, this is this is magical. We all get to like talk together in person. And it's not the same as being on a Skype call or something. No, it's yeah. very different. Yeah. Very different. You know, Greg, when I got you here, yeah. I did want to ask you about how you felt about how Spec Ops Line ultimately uh, turned out. Oh, I was, um, yeah, so I, uh, for context, I, I worked on that game for a year. Um, I was a producer at 2K uh, working with the developers in, in Berlin, uh, d- developer Jaeger, who these days, I, they're working on uh, Dead Island 2 in a game called Dreadnought, so I'm really happy that they're oh, doing cool yeah. new stuff. But anyway... Um, Techland, wherever, moved over to, they're doing, they kind yeah, of split they did, from, they, from the right, right. Silver. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was... I was very happy with how it turned, like, like um, the, the whole, the, the main goal of that game was always, like, the kind of the narrative ambition around um, the, it's, like, kind of particular depiction of war and using the, the game mechanics to kind of make you empathize with that situation. Um, and the exact way in which that was going to happen um, was always... You know, that, that game uh, s- spent uh, quite, quite a bit in development and went through a lot of iteration to get to where it ultimately ended up. And when I was working on it, um, it was uh, like the the ultimate end, the ending of that game. Um, I didn't know how how exactly it was going to end when I played the finished game because it, it you know it was still the story was still being worked on while I was there. But I was very very happy with how I thought like the ending was. And the whole story leading up to it, I was, yeah, I was very happy with it. Um, because I didn't, despite having worked on it, it still surprised me um, since good. I didn't know what the particulars were going to be. And I thought it, I thought it really nailed, you know, this this aspect that, that the team was really, really pushing hard for for a very long time. So I, uh, and I, I love that that game. I love that you're asking me about that game now that people still remember that game um, because I, I think it was going for something uh, very ambitious with its narrative and I think it's like... Kind of risky. It was, it was and I think it's emerged as this kind of like... I, I love that it still comes up and I feel like it's become this kind of cult classic. So I'm just really happy for all the folks who worked on it because there, there are a lot of people who worked on that game for much, much longer than me um, and uh, I feel like all the kind of blood sweat and tears that they poured into it uh, was was really worth it in the end uh, how, how they feel about it I don't know of course but I thought it turned out to be a really interesting game so well, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on any other questions I wanted yeah. to ask it Greg but I do appreciate your time Thank yeah you always much. a pleasure thanks